The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm Nisa. And I'm CJ. There we are. There we go. <laughs> That's better. Are we had to lip sync. I thought you were yeah, lip syncing. I was trying. I was trying. So the big news in Fall River uh -oh. today. Uh oh. Here the, we go. The big news. The Herald News has decided to now start charging everybody online or by home delivery to access the website for information. Wow. I posted that early this morning, and amazingly enough, the outpouring of hate and discontent <laughs> came flowing rather rapidly. Um, people saying that it's not worth buying, it's not worth paying for a fee, there are other sources, and, and you know, they're very accurate. But again, we expected this to happen. The New York Times, the Boston Globe, the Boston Herald, the Providence Journal, I mean, all these news sources are starting to charge because guess what? Nobody buys the paper anymore. Papers just aren't selling. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just aren't. And they're expensive and they're wasteful. So now they are putting everything online because that's where everyone gets their news. Right. And some of it is the most rapid and active sources available. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what type of a financial hit the Herald News takes because already people are saying, I, I quit getting their paper a month ago. I don't even go to their website anymore. So we knew it was going to happen. But again, is this the right time to do that? I don't know. CJ, do you think that, because um, in my opinion, it might be beneficial for them. So... I for everyone, actually, because they're not printing these actual papers. That might be costing more money than just charging a monthly fee on an app, let's say, or online. So, yes, people can't, you know, won't be buying the paper or looking up the news online for free, but um, we people used to pay $2 sometimes on Sundays and then 50 cents or something on the during the during the week. But if they're not spending that money on printing these papers, the fee shouldn't be more than, you know, it shouldn't be, it should be more, more or less what I'm trying to say here is that it should not exceed what the actual paper costs. Well, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. These, right. and, but the problem, I think, is that the entire society, we've moved on. It's kind of like we had downtown areas and now, unless they're very, very unique, uh, they gave way to malls, and now malls are beginning to, to, to die because of online shopping. Right. And the reality is most people don't get news from papers anymore. I mean, you've got a, you've got a few people that still uh, like to sit and put their feet up and read the paper at the end of the day, and sometimes you'll get them to read a more in-depth coverage. Mm -hmm. But with the instantaneous news we have from all these sources, uh, you know, especially a paper like the Herald, which is not a, a major a major paper. People might might refer to 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 you know the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or something like that. They may they may pick that up and read some in-depth articles at some point in time. But realistically, I understand why they're charging because look, pe people don't buy paper, but people don't read books anymore either. The reality is they you know our society has become uh, more prone to get everything given to you right your news verbally you know you either on the radio or on the television and and i think it's i don't think it's a good thing uh because in the old days when people actually had to read and listen to people and and it, it you know it it get, it made them more more uh attuned and also if you read it in a newspaper, it's a more in-depth report. Mm -hmm. They have a little mm -hmm. bit of time to put the story together. Because mm -hmm. sometimes today, you look at the media, they're on the scene instantaneously, and the first four or five reports they get are not really accurate because they're, somebody's telling them something, and they go, oh, wait a minute, it's not four people, it's not four gunmen, it's only two, or it's, it's seven. And, and, but 
you know, people have become conditioned to get their news in other places. And, right. you know, I understand what the Herald News has to do economically, but I don't think uh, it's going to do them much good. I think it's going to... You know, what you're going to see, they're going to have issues and continue to have issues. I may be wrong, but through advertisements, they could keep, you know, the traffic going and have it be for, be free eventually. But that's this what is they've how... been doing now. They've been running the Herald News website for, for free. Mm -hmm. And it's the ads that um, kept them afloat. The problem is, is that those ads become so pervasive that you really can't read the news because they've got pop-up ads and ads in the column and here, there, and everywhere. And then when you have web browsers like Google Chrome and Firefox, you can put add-ons to those browsers which immediately block all of those ads so you never see them. And because you don't see them, the Herald News doesn't generate any revenue. Okay. Um, and you know the same thing holds true for Facebook. People think Facebook is free. Facebook isn't free. Facebook collects your data, every place you post that you went to, every everything you do, and they they turn around and they sell that information. Mm -hmm. And they have all the ads on the sidebars and above the top, and and all of that data is mined. And they, that's exactly what they call it, is data mining. And then it's used to generate revenue. And it does, obviously, because Facebook stays free. So this is what happens in today's society. It's all about the buck. And, you know, news is not what it used to be. And, you know, we've seen with the Herald News um, that even the reporting isn't what people expect. We find all, all news sources, whether it be the Herald News, USA Today, CNN, NBC, whoever it may be, everyone seems to have a slight slant. But most of these try, try to be closer to center than not. Others, on the other hand, just go whoosh, over the deep end. <laughs> well, it is going to be a catch-22 because obviously if they begin to charge, less people are going to access online. Therefore, the people who are, are, are taking ads now, they won't be taking ads anymore because their ads aren't going to be seen. Uh, and it, it's kind of a catch-22. It's a difficult situation, but as you said, one of the other problems is we have today, that's why we tell you people to you know, research, study as much as you can about all the issues from every angle because the reality is in the old days, newspapers used to be pretty, for the most part, pretty unbiased. They were who, what, when, and where. Mm -hmm. it, you read the article, you read the story. It, as it, news it, it be. gave you mm -hmm. it gave you the it gave you the fundamentals, you know, and then it expanded a little bit on the story, but they stuck basically to the facts. Where today, you know, even by admission, there are there are stations that are just blatantly skewed toward in one direction or another. Mm -hmm. And as you said, even the ones who try to be kind of midstream, they're by you know they kind of they, they are biased to a degree. So that's why it's even more important in today's society for the people to to look and and research more. Don't just listen to one version of a story. That's very true. Try to look at try to look at something else. And you know I know that people are all, you know Fox is admittedly biased, but you know so is uh, you know MSNBC and and CNN and and Every reporter has their little today, and it, it, it's just it's a, it's a different world. It's a different world today. It's a world of, you know, instantaneous everything, gratification, news. Everything gets to you, like, within seconds of when it happens. And uh, even when you don't want it to, it, 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 it uh, comes in. But uh, let's get to some other issues, uh, CJ. Well, I had a lovely Friday after our show. I made a phone call to... The high, holy ones up in Boston. CJ's, CJ loves phone calls. <laughs> Not as much as complaints, but that's okay. <laughs> well, that's where it starts. I that's know. where it starts. So, I spoke with um, a Mr. Bliss and a Mr. Bradenton at the Department of Revenue. <gasps> and you know what? They don't want to hear from the public. That's what they said. We don't want to hear from you. We are not arbitrators. We are not arbiters. We just look at the books and we make sure that they're, that they're being valid with the law. I said, but I've got Supreme Court ruling. I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't interpret it. I'm not here to interpret anything. I said, if the city funds the sanitation 
fund out of city tax dollars. It is no longer a fee. It is a tax. That's your opinion. I said, that's case law. I said, I have a federal decision that doesn't apply to us. I, can somebody explain this to me? Yeah. I mean, aren't we the people? Yeah, but it's politics, you know, and, and the thing is what they do is they use every, we're not attorneys, but yeah, well, you are, a, you are an organization whose sole responsibility is to oversee the appropriate and legal use of revenue in the state of Massachusetts. And that means compliance with the law and expressly Proposition two and a half, which this affects. Now, Proposition two and a half limits the amount of taxes that can be that can be levied against the taxpayers uh, in in the Commonwealth. And if you do things like, as a matter of fact, I think on uh, next Tuesday's agenda, they're moving free cash into the DCM fund. Actually, is, that's tomorrow. Yeah. T well, it's, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Tuesday's uh, on Tuesday's agenda. They're moving money in from free cash, which, which is tax dollars, and, and to, to you know, it, that's what it is. Uh, and so we have all these issues, but the, they they don't want to hear it because the reality is they don't want anybody to look beyond. Okay. Uh, we just look at the numbers, and if they give us the numbers, we're not obligated to make sure that these numbers are accurate or correct. Right. If they give us the numbers, we assume that they are, they are telling the truth, which, you know, this is like a state representative or an or a elected official in Fall River saying that I can do what I want once I'm elected, and, and, and that's going to segue me into another issue. I guess uh, CJ took a little heat about the way he framed it. So I'm not going to speak for CJ, but I'm going to make it clear again. Uh, I know CJ said their opinion doesn't count, but I, mm -hmm. I don't know the context he was saying it in, but I'm sure that my context is that everybody's opinion counts. That's correct. But the fact is that the majority rules, and when you're an elected official, especially an elected official on a state level, you are sworn and as are our city councils, but especially at state level, to uphold the state constitution, which it all says at all times you are answerable and an agent of the people, mm -hmm. and at all times accountable to us. Your opinion does count, but your opinion is placed with other people's opinions, and the majority has to rule. That's what I'm telling you. In case you haven't figured it out yet, you don't get to be a duke or a duchess or a or a prince or a princess. Those days are long over. Because you were elected. You were elected to represent the people. Yeah. Our constitution in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts says very clearly at all times, not when you feel like it, at all times you are accountable to the people and answerable to the people. Mm -hmm. And so as I said on another show, if nobody contacts you on an issue, well, you vote your, you know, you vote your way to feel because you were elected to represent us if nobody. But when people tell you what they want and you go, well, I don't think you're right. I'm going to do what I want. You don't belong in office. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back to a, an actual situation that I had many years ago when a, when a governor of the state of Massachusetts who ran for president uh, ignored a ballot question. There was a ballot question on capital punishment in the state of Massachusetts. That passed, and capital punishment passed in the, in our, in the House and in the Senate. The governor, because he was personally, personally opposed to capital punishment, vetoed it. And then our delegate party, our representatives and senators, in their normal cowardly fashion, could not garner the votes to override the veto, even though those veto, even though those votes were supposed to be there from the initial vote, we had a few politicians who came from areas that were anti-death penalty, and they flipped their vote, and it fell just a just a, a few votes short of overriding the governor's veto. So the governor of the state of Massachusetts said that my opinion is more important than the people 
who I'm sworn to represent and be accountable to. And when that individual ran for president and asked me to support him, I told him face to face I could not support him because he didn't understand his own job. How can you be president of the United States when as governor you ignored the will of the people? Mm -hmm. And this is about it. I can't, you know, I don't care if you're a city councilor, a school committeeman, or a state rep or a congressman, you are there supposedly in this country, and I'm not saying it's true anymore, but you are there supposedly to represent the people. This is a republic. You know, we pledge allegiance to the republic, not to the democracy, right. to the republic. And that means a representative form of government. And by our own constitutions, that representative form of government requires the representatives to represent, mm -hmm. not to do what they want. So I had to get that out because I know there was a lot of controversy over the weekend with you, CJ, about your comments. Hey, and I still firmly believe it, and I'll, I'll stand by it because I stand by my comments. Their opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't count. When you are representing the people, if 99% of the people turn around and say, take down that mill, and 1% being you, the elected official, or elect to a position, decide I'm gonna get up and walk out of the room because it doesn't uh, go with my agenda, mm -hmm. okay? I'm sorry, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I understand what you're saying, CJ, but the, the way that characterization, they, they, you know how they distort everything. Of course. The fact is, listen, we'll, we'll use an absurd hypothetical. Let's say that a state representative hears from 500 people in favor and 500 people in oppose. Then his opinion does count because he's right. basically the tie-breaking vote. Exactly. We're not saying that, that their, their opinion or their belief on an issue is, is irrelevant because they're irrelevant. No, we're saying that it's relevant because they have an opinion and they have a right to it. But it should be irrelevant on the way they take action as an elected official. And that's what we're going to look at because when you look at the fact that we have six, six new city councilors, granted one of them, one of them's a retread and the other one didn't really serve a full term. So, but you have six new city councilors Okay, and we already know that three have their own agenda That's correct. of the six yeah. new. Okay, is that going to give the people the representation they were asking for? They were sending a message. Okay, we have three city councils which are still part of the old guard. All right, and we already know how they vote. They vote whichever way the wind blows. Okay, so let's be realistic. What they have to say really doesn't ha carry a lot of weight. When you have a room full of people, and we saw this how many times, Chip, in the city council chamber, a room full of people saying, we don't want the sanitation fee, we don't want payers to throw. When the majority of the public says no, and you still turn around and say, we know better. Mm -hmm. Who are you to tell me that you know better for me than what I know is better for me? And so I turned around and I exercised my right, and I went and I privatized my waste hauling because they're not gonna get another dime. And then I find out today that tomorrow, they may be turning around and taking my tax dollars anyhow to fund the trash. So what good was it? Sounds like a taxpayer complaint to me. It does to me too, and we have 15 or 20 people already willing to, to put their name on, on the line, but like I turn around and say, are you willing to put the money on the line too? Because this is the problem. When you want your rights in Massachusetts, you get 10 people together to file the suit but now you gotta pay for the lawyer, the filing fees and everything else. And you know what, it co it's costly. And they know it and that's why they do it. Because the, you can't win when you fight at City Hall. It's not that you can't win, it's that it's too expensive to fight. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and you know, that, that's the issue. And, and you know, and what disturbs me is when we got back to the fee is when we have these people who voted in spite of having a 90, percent to 10 percent opposition to the trash collection fee and now during campaign season they said 
Well, what did you expect us to do? We had to vote for it. Mm -hmm. Because what are we going to do, lay off fire and police? Well, no, that's not what I expected you to do. I expect you to represent the people. I expect you to tell, send that budget back to the mayor and say, figure out a way to keep the fire and police on the job and deal with the, deal with the enterprise fund, which, by the way, was supposed to be by law self-sustaining, make it do what it was intended to do. Because you people want us to pay for your incompetence. That is that that enterprise fund was started in 28, and it's never been sustaining since its inception. Even though by law it's supposed to be self-sustaining. So I don't want to hear your crap. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear what did you what, what did I expect you to do? Because you know something. If I don't have enough money to pay a bill, I can't go to my neighbor and say, "Give me some more, give me some money so I can pay my bill," because I had to. I had to do this. No, you have to give me money. You know, what my neighbor's going to tell me, "No, I don't." You can't run your own budget? Tough. Well, you know something? It was up to you to say, listen, the people of Fall River don't want this. And you find a way to fix this budget and prioritize public safety. That's what you do. Tip, not to steer off the subject here, but I don't find a lot of, I don't come across a lot of people like you and Chip who, who know that the, the government is here to represent us and uh, go by uh, this is why we have votes and certain things but a lot of people you know they vote for for these things or, or vote or vote against it and you know if it turns out it's like oh it's whatever you know because they rule over us and they don't see the fact that they are representatives of us which is unfortunate like you had said people need to do their research and this is very generalized but um overall there's just a lot of people who they're they're going out to vote just to vote, you know, and they think that the last say comes from the people on top, which it's not like that, and it shouldn't be like that. No, you're 100 percent right, it's because it's not general. It's it's a fact. It's a very spe and that's the thing. You know how many times I heard people say to me, "Well, you know, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. That's the way it is." Right. Well, <laughs> really, <laughs> really. That's that's one I mean, thing I hear all the that's time. The it's it's cop just the way the it world. is. Yeah, that's the way it is. What can you do? Well, you know what you can do. We, we've now begun to every election, we got three mayors in the space of less than 12 months elected. Now we got six councilors who were elected, mm -hmm. you know, who weren't sitting technically elected to the seats that were there. Granted, there were some empty seats and we had one guy that was in because he was 11th and, and moved in. But the fact is we have six people who were elected for the first time to the city council. Some of them, are, as you said, were, were elected previously, like Steve Kamara. But, you know, he's a new councilor again. He hasn't been in a council in a while. So we've got six councilors. So what do we do? What do I expect you to do? Do what we just did. You, you, you penalize the mayor for passing the trash collection fee. You got six councilors hold their feet to the fire. There is something we can do. We had we had 30 some percent turnout, which is good for Fall River, but it's not really good in a, in a relative thing. But what we do now is the next time, let's get 50 percent to turnout. Let's get 75 percent to turnout. Right. You know, th that's that's the thing, Nisa. Like you said, you know, you can't sit there and say. Oh, woe is me. What can you do? And that's the way it is. There's another great one that I love. That's the way it is. You know, or you, you know, it's like, yeah, well, it's that way because you don't put these people in. And you know something, CJ? You say that we've got three counselors with their own agenda. Well, you know something? Those three counselors better be very careful because the people are watching. And they might be one-term counselors like we have, oh, but less yeah. than a one-term mayor. Because I'll tell you what, the people have begun to wake up, and I'm proud of the people in Fall River now. They've come around. We, you know, we're changing the landscape of this city. Granted, it's not going to be overnight. Uh, granted, the people that got in were, were people with, with a constituent base, but now it's up to those other people 
a lot of whom made a lot of sense with some of their platforms to get out there, to stay active in the community, to stay active in government, and get down. And it's, you know, it's up to us. You're right, Nisa. The fact is, you can't sit there and go, oh, woe is me. There's nothing we can do. You know, it's they're, the, they're the boss. No, they're not the boss. We're the boss. That's and we, well, we can keep be, them. It's definitely going to be interesting to see ten, uh, this week with the uh, school committee because guess what? Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sam Sutter has said it very clearly. He has he has some unfinished business he has to complete before he leaves office. And one of those things that he has to complete is the superintendent contract. Now, again, here we go. You have two school committee members which are on their way out the door. They're lame ducks. And they were listed in the four from the letter from Robert Karen. Now, if those four decide to pass this contract with the public saying, we don't want her, with the mayor-elect saying, I want this held off until I take office so I can review it, and they do it, they have killed any future political process they may think they're going to take part in. And the two that are there that support it, okay, that are going to stay on the, on the committee, may have a difficult time in two years getting reelected. Well, they better hope on their vote because they're not lame ducks, they're dead ducks. Yeah, exactly. Now they're going to be dead ducks because this is not what the people want. You know, we, you know, even a, a, our, you know, our, our co-hosts on our debate, Channel 10, on, on the report of the evening in the election, they said the citizens of Fall River made it very clear they want change. So you know something? Don't act like politicians and try to get all your cronies in and, and uh, attach them to a contract. And then you know what's going to happen? We're going to have the woe is me again. They're going to say, well, we're bound by these contracts. You know something? I'm telling the mayor-elect, figure out a way to get out of it. Figure out a way if you've got to take them to court, no matter what it costs, get figure out a way to stop this madness. Because this is the way they con, they, they, they give the public the shaft every single time. There's a rush to create contracts, and there's no, there's buyout, and they all say it's too expensive to get rid of these people. You know something? I'll figure out a way to get rid of them. And you know how, Chip. You're very good at that. So, but you know, it's just very interesting to see how, you know, at the end of a term, okay, they're already looking at paying off their friends. All right. And we even saw pictures this weekend of, you know, the rats that have that have jumped off the other ship and now they're trying to jump on to the Jason Correa ship. I mean, it's amazing when you watch how this all works. You know, I hate Jason. He's no good. Blah, 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 blah. And I'll never support him. And da, 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 da. Jason wins the election. Jason, you're my friend. Let's go to the Boys Club uh, fundraiser and have a good time. Yes, let's get some pictures taken because I want everyone to know that I love you. It's just you know. to whatever is beneficial for them. Exactly. And, and, and by the way, Meg Mayo Brown's a really good superintendent. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Exactly. You know, but this is what happens. And the people of Fall River buy it hook, line, and sinker. And, and that's the problem. But I think with 34% this time, if we can get it up to 55% next time, okay, I think we're going to be better off. And I think the politicians are going to learn, guess what? We can't get away with what we used to get away with. We will see a different city, and, and we've already seen a different city. We've seen a different, we've seen the, we've seen the city council change dramatically. We've seen, you know, the, a mayor not even get a full term. We've seen... That we've seen what can happen when the public holds you accountable. And just think what happens when even more people come out. Hey, when three. even more, you know, I want to see, you know, I would love to see 90% turnout, 100% turnout. That'll never happen. But there was a time in this city where we had 70 and 75% turnouts in elections. And, and that, that was good. Though, that, and, and guess I'll what? I'll tell you what. The city ran properly back then. You're damn right, because I'll tell you what. Any politician that, that, that imposed a tax or a fee that the people weren't in favor of, they were, they were gone like uh, Rocket Man. <laughs> they were out of there, you know, and they knew we it. Didn't, we didn't take any crap back then. But you know what? As the voter base dwindled off, the politicians got stronger. When the voter base grows, the politicians get weaker. Remember that, people. Get your voter base up there. Make sure you're always getting out Remember there. Remember one thing. You know, united we stand, divided we fall. So stay angry, stay united, and, and 
we're united for good government. My turn, Chip. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> what have he said. Great, hey, we won't see you Wednesday. So have a great week and happy Veterans Day. <laughs> Chip, thanks for your service. You're welcome. To all my brother veterans, have a good day.